I made this. Hi, this is Winner Cleaning Magazine. Uh, we're here today with Ionix. This is Patrick from Ionix. We're at the FWC car park and Patrick is going to explain to us about the PPB system. We first developed, obviously, the Zero was in development over the last two years to where we're at today. Looked a lot of obviously older machines out there which currently yourself is using uh, where obviously we looked at uh, the way the series of filtration we pass through on the machines is to simplify that but also look at producing a machine that can just take it down to the next grade of pure water which we actually use as parts per billion as most operators have been using over the years which have been parts per million. Just look at the further stage and look at kind of what filtration we need to pass through to get to that level. So running through briefly on board on the machines, as you can see, it's a completely new refresh, redesign of the machine here. A uh, lot of changes on the machine. Just says a lot of John Guest fittings on the machines, which you use these days. Filters there where you're able to just replace the inserts on the machines. You know, being able to uh, reduce, obviously, of course, your running costs on machines and ease of uh, replacement filters. So briefly running through the system on there. On the back end of the machine, if you'd like to go around the side and have a look at the uh, back end of the machine first of all, so the water passes through on the uh, on, on the zero system on the parts per billion is a, is a UV steriliser on the back which obviously will take the bacteria out of the water prior to passing through any filtration stages. That's mainly going to take the, the build-up of any sludge that you do build up on the machines, but also prolong the life of the filtration on board by passing through the UV uh, steriliser first on board the machines. After it's passed through the UV, um, on the machines it will start passing through the filtration where we're actually producing then uh, the, 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 the deionized water to pass through to produce the water down to the parts per grade. The first thing the water will actually pass through is the 5 micron uh, sediment filter on board the machine and that will take typical sediment out of the water where you're like you say you're, you're passing through 5 micron the small sediment uh, you have there is taken out through the 5 micron sediment. After it's passed through the 5 micron sediment it'll then pass through your carbon which typically through a carbon filter there you're able then to reduce the amount of chlorine out of the water by passing through the carbon the carbon filter on that. After it's gone through the carbon, typically pass through the water softener on board the machines. What the water softener here will actually do is take out a lot of the calcium in the lime scale. Appreciate in the UK, not everybody has got a lot of calcium in lime scale. Mainly a lot of the hard water areas that uh, we supply machines into have uh, vast, uh, vast amounts of calcium where we will reduce and remove that out of the water for doing that. So it simply passes through, which will, will be regenerated with salt, which I'll run through on the fill sequence once we've gone through the, the filtration stages. As it, after it's passed through the uh, softener, it'll then pass through the reverse osmosis, which does work on either tap pressure, or we have now built in on the latest machines is a mains driven pump, as you can see through the filtration stages here, is the mains driven. And what that'll actually do is increase your water pressure on filling. On the machines, we're able to use the, the, the plastic housing you see on the machines, which are boosted around about 100 psi pressure, and we can reduce that, uh, increase that by changing these out to stainless steel housings. With stainless steel housings, we can increase the water pressure boosting through about 200 psi, so it really does increase your fill times on, on board on machines, which certainly help for a lot of operators that are expecting fill times to be very, very similar to what they are with the DI machines, uh, with the RO typically with this 600 litre machine in here with stainless steel housings, potentially fill times could be around about two hour period, with the plastic housings on here would be around about the three hour period, so it really has made a vast amount of difference on fill rates using reverse osmosis using obviously the latest technology using fast fill pumps on board the machines. 
after it's, uh, it's come through a soften, it'll boost through the, like you say, boost through the RO under the pressure, especially the mains driven. It will then produce, obviously, the reject water, which we know normally will obviously pass down through the drain. The nice soft particles will obviously pass through the DI. The main benefit of obviously all with, all, also with the Zero, the way the uh, the field sequence is done, the flushing of the system, we're trying to optimise the best we can the water quality out the RO by doing that. So normally ROs have been working at about 95 to 98%, but obviously we're aiming more towards that 98 percent uh, pure out the RO especially by passing it through and taking the bacteria out through the UV and also doing the constant flushing stages through the uh, through the RO on the field sequence which will we'll certainly run through so as I like to say good good quality out of out of the uh, RO will drop into the DI it'll pass through the DI up into the tank so now into the tank then you're producing water down to a, a zero parts per million stage of filtration what the system will also do after an hour of fill time, making sure there's water in the tank, it'll circulate water out of the tank through the further stage of uh, filtration then to produce down to zero parts per billion stage of filtration uh, to back into the tank. So then obviously we're taking it to the 18 meg water at that point, which is certainly going to help on the, the, the cleaning stages, which will run through again further further on at the, the end of the stage there for doing that. And that's obviously on, on your fill. Once obviously it's run for around about six hours through the further stage of filtration, it'll shut off and the complete system will We'll, we'll shut down at that point. Running through the fill sequence, one main aim, especially with the newer machines, was to be able to uh, produce a machine that maintains itself automatically. A lot of uh, comments we've had back from a lot of older customers was the obviously the maintenance where they have to stop backwash the softeners, flushing of reverse osmosis, purging of water. So one main benefit we had with the newer machines is to be able to develop a machine that does all these stages for us automatically. So all we wanted the operators to do was hit the start button in and it will pass through its stages of filtration for doing that so it's able then to you know automatically uh, do all the maintenance on board right for running through the the the, the fill sequence in the stages and the only operator the only maintenance the operator actually does and is simply put salt granules in the salt canister here simple top off here with a clip ring and then top off and then we can fill salt granules into here for doing that well that obviously salt granule will be used for is uh, salt backwashing the water softener which I'll explain once we get through the fill sequence on that and as the on, on the fill sequence itself where you hear see here uh, when the machine first goes on fill it will go on to system flush okay where it will flush through the reverse osmosis and clear any calcium buildup that's inside the RO during the, the day it's been used for doing that so it will clear through on there so system flush the RO which normally you do on an older machine once a week for around 20 minutes every time this machine actually fills we will flush the RO uh, to make sure it's done for five minutes system purging then will drop down a system purging after five minutes what that will actually do at that point is whenever you put a machine first on fill the TDS readings on the RO is always quite a high reading and it drops down on the machine normally that high reading will allow it to go into the resin which will go into the tank this time around opposed to doing that we'll actually put that down the drain for the five minutes so we get the the lower TDS readings going into the resin for doing that job to prolong the life of your resin consumption on your machine which has been a great plus side to do because often you can see you know 100 to 200 ppm for the first couple of minutes on the system purging state. So the system purge will be for five minutes where you'll see all your waste get obviously going down the drain. Then it'll drop down down to tank filling once obviously then into your 10 minute cycle. That'll then kick in the, the fast fill pump on the machine if the machine's fit with a fast fill. That'll kick that in and then obviously of course start to fill the tank. As, as already discussed, uh, dependent on what type of housings you've got the machine, depends on how long the machine will take to fill. Any uh, any stance then going from the uh, stainless housing would be like you say your two hours, your plastic housing then up to kind of like your three hour uh, fill time. Once the tank is full of course it'll shut itself down and as we talked about after an hour of fill time the circulation pump will kick in to circulate the water. The tank will obviously come on to uh, the full light on here. Uh, that means obviously the tank will be completely full at that point and then the water will drop into the salt canister here, the first one, take the salt out of here, drop it into the softener for 10 minutes to make sure we clear the salt out of here to do the automatic salt backwash at the end of the cycle. That really has worked very, very well for a lot of operators, like you say, that run staff on uh, with machines that obviously in the past it's always been, yes, it's been done, it's been done, and then obviously, you know, uh, of course we find that later on down the line that it hasn't been done, and like you say, of course, they're replacing reverse osmosis membranes on a frequent basis because maintenance not being carried out. So, of course, that certainly has helped uh, with operators uh, to take away that operator error on board on machine, which has been obviously very, very popular with a lot, a lot of customers for doing that. Um, 
The Zero obviously parts building was mainly built uh, for those operators that are, uh, of, of course, doing a lot of irregular cleans. We're doing a lot of three monthly, six monthly, 12 monthly cleans. Obviously, the hot water was always a great invention 10 years ago, moving from cold to hot because they could always see the benefit of using hot on those really, really dirty jobs at that point. Zero parts building using uh, as hot water, certainly have noticed a vast amount of differences then on the three month, six month, the 12 monthly cleans where there's a lot of dirt to be taken off from, you know, from the frame the seals especially on cleans that haven't been done for long periods of time and that was mainly the you know the the big development then and uh, to the next stage with the zero and that's obviously where we've really uh, moved forward with on the machines themselves so the the final stage for the parts per billion so we yes. call it zero because i know some don't like the idea of calling it parts per billion yes so yes. We'll, we'll call it zero for this stage. that's the final stage is that yes just the single stage for the final stage yeah or? well it obviously circulates through the final stage of filtration and back into the tank so it's circulating the water uh, basically through there for doing it so with a series of filtration it's passing through on there is able to optimize obviously the, the the RO then to be able to do that to circulate through that stage for doing yeah. that job of the machine. So it circulates after it's in the tank through the yes uh, through the, the final stage but like say stage. all the we're optimizing the yeah. RO to the best of its ability by passing through all the f further stage of filtration through right. and so forth for doing and, and it obviously passes through the UV does it pass through the UV as it's been circulated or it, it, it passes through, through the UV when it's obviously on fill cycles at that time so it passes through the UV then it passes through its series of uh, filtration on board the machines for doing okay. that so for and obviously this is, as we read in your uh, um, leaflet, uh, yes. it's useful for airports and anywhere where there's yes. a lot That's of That's where it's been very, very popular yeah. for. A lot of the, you know, the regular stuff month in, month out, a lot of people have been extremely happy with the current machines producing water down to the parts per million stage. Mm. But it's certainly helped us then on a lot of the cleans where it is very, very dirty, you know, very dirty climates, uh, where mm. it's really, really helped. Just that next grade of water has always helped to get those jobs up, you know, quicker and being able to get it over, like I say, on the first pass yeah. for cleaning them. So it certainly helped in those areas like that, which are irregular and airports and areas like that, yeah. is where we've really noticed the benefit of them. And that's what seems to be a lot of comments back on that. So is there anything else that they can, you can do? Uh, We've got it down to this zero, which yeah, is Yeah, like it's always obviously the next stage. We're very, very heavily into R&D, new innovation all the time, look at next grade. I'm unsure where the next stage is going to go because I don't get too involved in that area on the business. But of course, we do have somebody full time on R&D along with Craig Morland, uh, the guy that owns the business and developed the reach washing machine when it was new. And of course, it's, uh, I'm sure there will be a next 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 level on machines. It's Like I said, it's taken a long time to where we're at today. But like I said, it's just all about spending time to get to the next level on machines. How how do, you, how do you measure PPB? Well, there is a way of being able to test it with a, a, a TDS meter that you can test it down to that quality. Obviously, a, a, a meter of that is quite an, a, an expensive meter for doing that job, so you can obviously test it down to them. Passing it through the stages that we've actually passed it through on board the machines is tried and tested, so we're able to produce it down to that grade of, of pure water for doing it. So it is the stages of filtration we pass it through to be able to do that um, is on, on the machines themselves, and that's the key thing. Because typically, we can work out roughly, if you're just doing a DI, system only you can roughly yes. work out how much water you can pass through yes. based on what your quality of water That's is right. to get it down to zero yes how, how long would the uh, the parts per billion uh, or the zero we try to, to make sure um, on board on machines that uh, as long as you don't let the TDS go over the uh, parts per million filters of the the the, the, the this stage of filtration which passes through on the on the fill cycles before it recirculates normally you'll pass through is not once it gets to you know one one parts per million we'd recommend obviously of course that filter is replaced yeah and then obviously on the uh, nuclear grade DI is what's used on the parts per billion then at that point we replace that six times you've done the PPM filter on board the machines so we make sure it's replaced at that point but you, the operators must remember to replace the DI at one once it gets to one then yeah. you replace so the so you, you replace both of the yeah you would yeah. you would you would like say you replace this six times yeah. and then you'll replace this on board okay, the machines because yes. mo most operators if they've bought the machine won't have the facility to, to work out as Lee said. No, 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 of course. And that's so obviously why we've got to trust, give it. Yeah. Yes, that's why we've got to give it. We can understand when obviously, of course, filters are ordered up to understand when we would recommend obviously, yeah. of course, having that. And of course, all your training is given to the operators on the machines when obviously they're first uh, handed over at that point mm. to recommendation on when to replace the filters for doing that. And can, can the so. operator work out that it's not working as well? Uh, I'm just well, to... obviously, series of filtration on board on the machine you can do. With you obviously got TDS meters on board the machine, so you understand obviously the water quality after the ROs and things like that. So you understand if there's a problem with the machine, especially on reverse osmosis, tends to be most problems people pick up on mm. because they've not been maintained. Then certain stages you can obviously test water down to for doing that job. Like I said, out of the RO, we always 
always expect an RO to be anything from 20 and below on the TDS readings. Anything, obviously, uh, anything above that, we know there's a problem at that point on board the machines. So there's a way of being able to eliminate through a series of doing that on board the machines. We do have an inline TDS meter to yeah. be able to check it down to parts per at that point for doing it. So, so basically, the operator who's operating this only needs to know that every once it gets over one parts per million, he yes. changes that every six times. He changes. Yeah. The, the, part, the yeah, the, the further the, state the of filtration. Yes, yes. You, everything else is automated. Yes. So basically, so the, an idiot so the, yeah, can so do it. So basically, that, that's that. what the machine has been developed on to understand that it can be used that way. But putting salt granules in here is really the operator's job yeah. on a day-to-day -day usage on the machines, yeah. and that means then everything is done automatically on the machine. And that was the key. You know, it was one of the points that he made when we first developed the machine, as well as everything else. It was developing everything that made a machine completely different to the old range of machines, yeah. which is quite important thing yeah so so on a general running cost if you were taking this 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 machine out every day yes five days a week yes 50, 50 weeks of the year what, yes. what sort of maintenance well, no, cost would it would normally it cost? obviously salt granules which you'll have a bag of bag of salt granules typically two to three months normally a bag of salt granules will last so you've got your salt granule cost of course on the machine filtration replacements normally your carbon your sediment are normally replaced after 1200 man hours what has got an hours meter on the machine uh, i would normally look at a carbon and sediment replacement normally on roughly about a yearly basis it does come down to usage, obviously, of course, day to day, how much water they're passing through. Mm. TDS readings of the tap water can obviously make a slight variation yeah. as well on water quality. So like you said, the uh, ca uh, carbon and sediment normally are done, which are the, the carbons are around about 60 pounds, the sediment's about 40 pounds on board the machine, so normally on a yearly basis. Soft new tend to find is never normally replaced because the salt granules are, of course, salt backwashing it, so there's no need to actually replace the softener on a, on, on a frequent basis. The reverse osmosis, typically you look at an RO replacement normally between three and five years on a lot of the older machines and that's on the basis of uh making sure the customer does salt backwash regularly and flush the RO regularly to optimise obviously the lifespan of the RO and of course if we see that's not being done of course we're going to optimise the life of typically that RO. We've seen RO typically replacement between it you know within a year because they haven't been maintained. The nice thing with it because we know it's being maintained for doing that by passing it through the stage of filtration then of course then we can start to look at a longer lifespan of an RO. It will still have a slight variation if your TDS was very very high from your tap quality at that point. Yeah. So if you're extremely hard, then of course it can make a slight difference in obviously lifespan of RO. But typically, you know, good look, good five years out of your RO replacement on board the machines. The DI, of course, will vary depending on the water quality at the RO. We like to obviously make sure the RO is performing and producing anything from 20 and below. Having good mains pressure on filling always makes an RO perform extremely well. And to be fair, 80 to 90 percent of zeros we've produced to date does have the fast fill pump upgrades on the machines so that also then as also helping the RO produce a good quality of water as well so we're getting good readings at the RO before it passing through the DI and of course then getting good lifespans at the DI on board the machines yeah. typical running cost we look at on a machine like this we look at a couple hundred pound a year in replacement filters typically the carbon sediment and then normally you look at obviously a couple of a good few DI, DI units on board yeah. machines so a couple, so couple hundred quid is not actually uh, it, it's it's probably about how much resins I use and I just DI only. Exactly. So it's, so not, it's, it's certainly, amount, like you it? say, it certainly helped, uh, especially in these hard water areas yeah. where we are passing through very, very high TDS, where we are you know, obviously optimising you know, the water at the RO mm. the best we can, because that's really obviously what you're looking to do, is to achieve that and uh, make sure we bring that down to the best we can on board the machines. Yeah. For doing that, so so you, you, this is the last of the road shows, I understand? Yeah, well, we didn't, like you say, this is the, the final, final leg. Obviously, we were at Glasgow there, which we had to uh, move on from two weeks ago to, to yesterday uh, so Glasgow was the, the last one yesterday and like I so said in the Federation this morning then up till 12 and then obviously we'll be shooting off so we've had a good two week run of road shows which has been really really good we've done about 20 different venues um, we've kind of split them up these days for doing normally a morning uh, and an afternoon so we normally spend three hours at each venue at that point and we've had a really really good turnout so you know so far this year so it's been you know, been really really good. good so I've been impressed and you know so does good and, and Craig's good. happy for Lee and I to take this machine away for free just for the fact that we're giving you some uh, <laughs> would be public, nice public... <laughs> would be that would be good <laughs> would be nice can I ask you what are all the lights on the system for they were just to finish the system off at that point, to be honest with you, is more of a, a finishing touch to the machine, uh, 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 as, like you say, is a is a is a finishing touch on the machine. So you have, like you say, your your, your blue lights on the machine, just a finishing touch on the system. And what does the UV light do? The UV light obviously taking taking uh, obviously your bacteria out of the water, out of the machine. That's obviously the key benefit of having that on the machine.
do, do you get bacteria in tanks? You can get bacteria in, uh, especially in uh, long term, especially in the ROs and things like that. If you take a uh, reverse osmosis membrane that's been in there for many, many years, you can often get a lot of the slime, slime and sludge in there. We're trying to reduce that and take that out. So that's killing that. It's like obviously with UV is what's used on, obviously, of course, a lot of fish tanks these days passing through UV. Mm. Stops, obviously, the buildup of that type of thing in the tanks. And that's obviously why we're passing through UV, so we can stop the buildup of that inside the reverse osmosis for if, doing that if, if the system's been static for a couple of weeks, yes. what, what other maintenance would you recommend? Because I know what? when I've used cheap ROs in the past and yes. left it for a couple of weeks, it's gone nice and green, like yes. you said. that's right. What would that's you recommend right. for this? Well, I would always make sure we drain it down as much as we can to do that on board the machines. So we physically drain out all, you know, all, the, all the filtration down as much as we can on board the machines to stop any buildup. Yes,